And our work in the lab, my work, as well as many of my collaborators for a long, long time uh, throughout the 90s, was really focused on understanding how the liver was damaged. We didn't really know exactly how, the, how that worked. We thought the buildup of the bad alpha-1 in the liver was very important, but how that exactly worked, a lot of, a lot of studies and research went into that in the lab in dishes and cells and in special models and some in people but a lot of the work was done at, at a bench top in the lab and as we really understood more about that then an interesting sort of you know alignment came about and that was research that has uncovered new things about a, a class of molecules called RNA so RNA is a type of molecules that are in all your cells and are important in regulating your body's function. Uh, and when I was in medical school, there were three kinds of RNA. And then a little more than 20 years ago, some researchers discovered there are a lot more than three kinds of RNA. And in fact, they're doing lots of jobs we never knew about. And these researchers actually, about 20 years ago, won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for many of these new discoveries of RNA. And some of that technology has led to the RNA vaccines for COVID, in fact. So there's been a, a really a revolution understanding RNA. And we started to realize about 15 years ago, we as researchers, that perhaps we could harness some of these discoveries for medicines. In fact, with some of this RNA technology, it was going to be possible to turn off one particular gene in your liver that you would pick. So you could pick a gene and say, we'd like to turn that off, and we could give you perhaps a medicine that would do that. And so groups of people sat around and thought, well, that would be pretty exciting technology. What would that treat? And alpha and trypsin deficiency is actually near the top of that list. So a disease where something is made in the liver, it hurts your liver, it's very bad for you, and you would like to tell your liver to stop making the toxic substance. And so uh, more than a decade ago, I had met with a variety of researchers and biotechnology companies to try to explore this idea. And in fact, in 2011, for the first time in my lab, we have mice that have alpha and trypsin deficiency liver disease, and we used a very early version of the drug, never been really tested in that way before, and we cured the mouse liver in six weeks. So back in 2011, we had a strong, strong idea that this would probably work. Now, it's a big leap between people and mice. When those uh, aha moments come together and what it means to the discovery of advancing the disease, right? The more we learn, the more you peel back the onion, the more you understand there's there's more steps to take. And, and him uh, making that discovery a decade ago was certainly one of the giant steps forward in trying to understand this disease better and figuring out, okay, maybe there is a way that we can cure this and let's start looking at therapeutics that might be able to fit that that model to help us find a cure. We've, you know, we've made tremendous progress and through collaborations with other researchers, other universities, really, researchers around the world, as well as biotech companies and drug companies. We, we now have formed a team and uh, developed a treatment uh, that, that can not only stop the liver damage from alpha and trypsin deficiency, but in a preliminary study, which we have just released, we found that half of the people who were treated with this new drug, the fibrosis, cirrhosis in their liver actually improved. So what I was taught years ago that that could never be reversed, we showed with this new treatment that we can reverse it. When we first saw that the liver disease was reversed, I was uh, completely awestruck, you know? It was uh, one of those things you, you don't get to experience very often. For us, when we read it and heard about it, I think we all sort of took a, a, a gasp of, of wow. In fact, I think most people thought it could not be done. And the fact that we showed that, that half of the patients involved in a really a very short trial of this new drug, six to 12 months of treatment, that they improved and you know, walked back from the edge of a liver transplant was incredible. And, and uh, you know, just uh, when you work on something for 29 years and then you, you know, you're on a team that makes a big impact, it's, it's incredibly satisfying, and it's the reason why many of us go into medicine and research in the first place. We had a group of patients that were treated, first a number of patients in Germany with one of my collaborators there, and then at several other places around the world, including in the United States. We were, again, using an RNA-based treatment, which was the 
third or fourth generation from the thing I had first tried in 2011, it showed that we could shut down the alpha and trypsin production in humans. And then we were looking at, at the effect on the liver, and so the information in which we developed, which showed that the fibrosis could actually get better, they, a few months ago, they sent me that result in an email, and I, oh, I started crying. I mean, after <laughs> 29 years to see that we could impact these patients you know, was, was in, in, incredible and, and, and really uh, I was overwhelmed.